Hi, this is my overview of Corel Aftershot Pro 3. Aftershot Pro 3 is Corel's photo editing and management software. Corel Aftershot Pro 3 is available on both Windows and Mac. I'm a Mac user and I'm reviewing this for mymac.com, so I'm going to review the Mac version of the program. In terms of user interface, this program is pretty accessible to anybody who's ever used anything like Lightroom before or pretty much any other photo editing piece of software. You've got a library which you can import photos into, into different catalogs here, or you can work directly with images from the file system. The benefit to using the library and importing things into catalogs is anything that's in a catalog gets unlimited edit history, so you can undo your edits at any point in time, whereas if you're working in the file system and working out a bunch of pictures in there, you're only going to be able to undo edits with the edit history for that session. In both cases, you're working with files from their original locations. Even if you import something into your catalog, you need to leave the master file alone because its location is unchanged. In fact, here are my Aftershot Pro 3 catalogs. And if you look at Oregon, you'll notice that Assets just drills down into the original location of the pictures. All it is is a folder showing the hierarchy, and in order to see those, you actually have to go to that location, and here they are. Aftershot Pro 3 lets you do things with pictures such as rate them. Here you can see this photo I've given four stars to. You can also color code them. You can say, okay, this is a green photo, and that will help you later when you go to search things. I can flag it for a pick that I might want to process later. You've also got rotational capabilities here a little odd considering that this is your categorizing and management tools and then you've got rotating, but whatever. So what does that do for me? Well, now that I've got, now I can say label and I can filter it by green. There's my green guy, that's the only one. I can filter it by rating, more than or equals. And then if I undo this, oh, there's more pictures that I've rated at four stars. So as far as filtering and labeling and organizing you can see that you can do searching by a lot of different things here i've ordered it by f-stop date and here's if i want to see the most recent ones first here they are so the organizing and filtering tools are immediately understandable to anybody who's ever done photo editing before and they're also quite discoverable now we're going to move on to the adjustment tools. Over on the right-hand side of the program window, you've got your different adjustment tool panes. You've got Standard, which has a bunch of the basic adjustments that you can make to photos. Color, which is specifically color-related, and you can adjust your white balance, your color management, your curves. You've got Tone, Sliders, Detail, which of course is sharpening, noise, lens correction, which I'll talk about that, Metadata, uh, you just saw something happen there that is one of my complaints about this program, and that is just by mousing near something, you can start changing selections. And unfortunately, this does not just apply to these tabs. It also applies to slider values. For example, if I'm near the, anywhere near the slider and I happen to touch my mouse, you can see I'm not adjusting the slider at all. I'm not touching the slider. I'm not clicking on it. All I'm doing is barely touching my mouse while I'm near it and I've changed a bunch of these values right here. I don't care how convenient you think it is, please do not let me make adjustments to my picture without actually clicking on and holding down one of these or typing a value in here, because right away I'm accidentally making adjustments just by having my mouse near here. Zoom is another thing where this happens all the time if I have my hand anywhere near my mouse. See the zoom slider just moved right there, now I'm zoomed in like this. I can go back, but it just, it, it happens if my hand is on my mouse at all. And yeah, this is using the Magic Mouse 2 on my iMac, but that's the mouse that the iMac comes with. And if they're going to have this software on this platform, they've got to understand that people are going to use that mouse. I just don't want that. I don't want this to move unless I specifically come down here and say, you need to move. With zooming, inconvenient. With image adjustments, big problem when it happens. One other problem that I want to show you that happens sometimes with Aftershot Pro 3 at least for me, on my Mac, is watch the corner of this image as I make an adjustment. Did you see that hop? And did you see the way the sharp, the apparent sharpness of the image changed? Watch. Look at that. 
so basically what happens is when you make an adjustment, sometimes, it, and this time, ah, there it finally went back. This time it kind of stayed there and then it went back. It does usually go back to where it was before, but sometimes the apparent value changed. Now look, this time it stayed off to the right and the sharpness seems to have changed. Now it hops back. This time it stayed and it's not as sharp as it was. Now it's sharper. You can't edit a picture if you click or make a sliding adjustment and your photo hops. See that? There it goes again. The problem isn't just that it hops, it's that sometimes it doesn't go back to exactly the same position, like right there, and sometimes the apparent sharpness changes. So what happens when you come over here to detail and you want to adjust your sharpening? How do you know what you're really doing if whenever you make a slider adjustment, your apparent sharpness changes? Now I've got my sharpening set here. Now I'm going to go back here. It makes it very hard for me to trust the adjustments that I'm making on the picture. It's just, A, it's visually disconcerting, and B, it makes me wonder what's really going on with the picture. How do I know exactly what the sharpness level of my photo is? Or in the cases where it seems to move slightly and doesn't hop back, how do I know exactly where my crop is? I mean, we're only talking a few pixels, but still, this should not be happening at all. Right, obviously I have some complaints about Aftershot Pro 3 on the Mac. However, there are a lot of good things that I do like. The thing I like the most about this program is the non-destructive editing and the ease at which you can experiment with adjustments and roll them back. Part of that is because it has layers. Not only that, you can add different kinds of layers. Here's an adjustment layer, here's a heel clone layer. So here's a heel clone blemish layer that I've done. I want to show you what happens here. Basically what I wanted to do was I wanted to get rid of this seagull. There it is right there. So I created this heel clone blemish layer and I made these selections and voila, the seagull's gone. So yeah, basically adjustment layers allow you to do things like that. You can use them for anything. If I create an adjust layer, for example, here's my main layer. I add an adjustment layer. I could take a brush and I could increase the size of this and show strokes. All right. Now let's do something crazy like change the hue right there. Okay. And you can see the effect it had. You can barely see it here, but you can see it pretty well up here. And basically any place that I select on this layer is going to have uh, uh, here, let's make another one. Okay. And there it is. So basically whatever adjustment I make, all the selections on that layer are going to have that adjustment. It's a really nice way to be able to control where you want adjustments and what they're going to look like. Obviously this is a spurious example. I would never do something like this. But I mean, you know, in essence, you can use this for your dodging and burning. You can use this for local contrast adjustments. You can, you can add a new adjustment layer and decrease the contrast of the entire thing right there. And that contrast change is just tied to that layer. So you can get rid of the layer and your contrast goes back. That to me is the number one feature of this tool is being able to make adjustments by layer, either across the entire layer or using these different selection tools. Also, I was talking about the history earlier. Here's the history. Let's go back in time. And there we go. Aftershot Pro 3, $79 for perpetual license. There's no subscription and it's a great program. It does have some problems that I showed you and I really think Corel needs to get rid of those. The jumping photo syndrome is a problem. The accidental slider one is a big problem for me. Corel does have to fix those problems. Once they do, I think this will be a highly recommended program.